Hello, and welcome to episode number 203 of the Lions Podcast. My name is Matt Brown, joined each and every week by Stephen Andrus and Brad Allen. We go down all of the games in the NFL, but there's no games this week. There's only one game left. It's the Super Bowl. It's next weekend, but we're still going to give you some thoughts here anyway, some of the markets that are already available out there. If you want to follow Stephen on the Twitter machine at Stephen Andrus one you want to follow Brad at Brad Allen NFL, you want to follow me at Matt Brown M2, be sure and follow us over on the YouTube as well if you're not already watching this there. Guys, we have... Um, the Rams and the Bengals, we had three and a half for a very hot second. It was gone. It goes to four. It settled at four for a couple of days. It moved to four and a half. As of yesterday, we started to see some fours show back up again. So as we sit this morning here on a Friday, uh, DraftKings, MGM, Bet365, Rivers, William Hill, all sitting four and a half. FanDuel points bet are still uh, have moved to four again. The total is 48 and a half across the board in this one. So no varying total here. I mean, this goes into the deal that we always talk about. Be sure that you have multiple outs. Be sure that you have multiple books because whatever number you want is available right now. You just got to have multiple outs out there with everything. So Brad, I'll start with you on this one. Um, again, three and a half for about two hours was gone, got to four, sat at four for a couple of days, got to four and a half. Now we're starting to see the some of the buyback here on the Bengals getting down to four at some of these other books. Listen, with all these new markets betting into this here in the United States and, and New York coming on board, Louisiana coming on board just this week, they're going to be hot to trot to bet on this thing. It wouldn't surprise me to kind of see this number ping pong back and forth all the way up until up until game time. Yeah, I can't really see it going back down to three and a half or yeah. up to six. So it's going to sit in this kind of dead zone, you would think. Um, I mean, what one of the things you often see is that that little Super Bowl tax where you can get the money line a little bit cheaper than, say, four and a half. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, 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 depending on what side you want, you, it might be better to take the money line on the Rams and, and take the points on the Bengals is, is often a thing you see on the Super Bowl. Yeah, and Stephen, you and I talked about this on the early pod on uh, on Monday, but that is actually not the case right now. Like, this has historically been the case in Super Bowls that you get value on the favorite on the money line, but it's actually going the other way right now. It is up to Rams minus 200 at the majority of the books where when you and I were looking on Monday, there was minus 185, minus 190-ish, and it's going the opposite direction here. So this is new to me. It's new to you, new to Brad. We've never had this many people betting into a market before. We've never had this many people betting this early into a market before. So it very well might go the way that we think that it's going to go or that has historically. But as of right now, it's actually going the opposite direction. Matt, I don't have the years of experience you have with this, but I'm, I'm my first reaction here. Tell me if you think it's right or wrong, is that perhaps the public money hasn't started filing mm -hmm. in here yet. You know, with all these new states and these new apps, I would assume that the big, the larger number of tickets for the public will come in closer to kickoff here. And we're seeing a little bit more um, sharp money coming in here, moving this towards the Rams. And uh, what is that maybe a fair hypothesis here? Or do you think I'm off? No, I mean, and Brad, you've certainly done more kind of looking into this stuff just from a business aspect than we have. But I would imagine even with it being the Super Bowl, even with it being the only thing to bet from an NFL standpoint, that most likely the casual better, the even the let's say even outside of the casual, let's call it even the recreational better. The guy that bets, you know, fairly regularly, but doesn't take it all that seriously is probably still not betting this thing until what? Thursday of next week, Friday of next week, something like that. I mean, they're they're not getting in this early, right? No, surely not. What's interesting is this prop market. Um, so, I mean, you're talking about legalization, perhaps more people having access to this stuff. There's definitely more people having access to props than ever been before. You know, mm -hmm. the, the likes of found you on DraftKings, they're definitely more prop friendly than the offshores. So there's probably new money going to be entering the market definitely next week, definitely closer to the game time. So I mean, you, you look at the props for the, you know, the marquee names, the Cooper Cups, the Odell Beckhams, the T Higgins, Jamar Chase, they're all low-ish. They're all sort of near what you would expect. Um, and you, you've got to assume that the only, only way the public is going to bet this, and this is possibly an unprecedented flood of money, 
is is all going to be on the over. So if you like some of these unders, I've got mm. to think if you wait till kickoff on these big names, you're, you're definitely going to get an extra three yards or something. Yep, that is uh, that is awesome, awesome advice and something that I've been kind of talking about over the last couple of days on on some of my other programming that I do is if you're an under guy, you better get on. You better find the unders you like and you better bet them now and you better get on them now because it is going to be all over money. And it, I mean, it is if, all if you're an it, over. If you're an over guy, bet the overs now because the all, it's going to be all overs money later. Y- yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, if you're if you're an over guy, then you're going to need to bet all the overs right now because the the uh, the the money coming in, especially on like people are going to look at Jamar Chase and see that sitting at seventy seven and a half, seventy eight and a half, yeah, seventy nine yeah. and a half, like for his receiving yards, and that is going to be nothing but one way traffic on the over for him in that game. So, um, yes, if you if you want if you do like any of the overs, bet them now, and if you want the unders, I would. Look literally wait until Sunday. I I mean, I think you're going to get, you're going to get the best number come Sunday on all this guys. It's 48 and a half across the board. And that's, that includes even here in Vegas, right? There's not even, there's not a single book in the country right now that has a different number posted than 48 and a half on the total in this one. Listen, we'll dissect this game completely up and down all around in our, in our final pod next Friday, but just initial thoughts here. Um, on the total as well, because I think the game scripts, the way that this could go does vary, right? I mean, a couple of different ways here and certainly would play into how that this, this total goes. I mean, Steven 48 and a half. What is your, what is your initial thought here? Hmm. I think it's right. I don't think there's really a big edge on either side here. I think it's come down a little bit from open. I think we were around 49 and a half or even 50 at one spot. So, um, I think it's fair. I don't see a big edge on either side here. I mean, you can, you and I are going to have very different opinions of this game and we'll save it for next week. I think we're looking at this in different ways. And I think Brad is probably a little bit more um, aligned with my opinion of this game. So um, I think the Bengals are going to struggle. So I, I think that's more, if I was to lean over or under on this one, I would, I would lean the under. Um, but don't have a strong feeling on it because there's just it's the Super Bowl and there's a million other bets on the board that I can bet on instead of the over under and, and like a little bit better than than this market. Yeah, I think the total is the one thing that I will be kind of just wiping off the board and not even looking to play at all. Like, I, I don't, I'm not even going to consider it because, again, I think that there are three distinct different game scripts that could play out in this one and, and all three yield a different result for me from a total standpoint. There's nothing similar about the three different ways that I kind of think that this game could play out. And so the total to me is kind of unbettable because I haven't been able to really hone in on how everything goes. Um, Brad, do you have any thoughts on the total sitting at 48 and a half as we record this on a Friday, a good 10 days before the game kicks off? Uh, It's definitely an underlook for me. Uh, more than anything at 48 and a half I haven't bet anything in that number I would say I think the Bengals are really going to struggle um, obviously the, the matchup everyone is talking about is, is the Bengals offensive line against the Rams defensive line which is, is a big as mis- a mismatch as you'll find literally on any NFL Sunday this year and obviously it's the Super Bowl um, so I don't think they can block them and I think you can do all the quick game you want but you're going to struggle to move the ball they've scored five touchdowns in three games in the playoffs so I don't think there's something going to come to life here. And then the other other side of the ball, I could see the Rams struggling a little bit. Um, they've not run the ball well all year, and especially in the playoffs, although some of that is maybe the defense that they're playing. And then the Bengals, I think it, it, the coverage is good, and I think they're probably smart enough and can adjust enough to play enough zone. Um, you know, we've spoken all through these playoffs that Stafford is an absolute monster against the blitz and against man coverage. Um and I, I do think the Bengals are smart enough to just sit in zone all game long, like, like they did to the Chiefs, and really make the Rams matriculate down the field. Um, so, yeah, if we're looking at a high total, and I think one team's not scoring, and the other team is going to have to go on long 12-play drives to score, and it's probably going to settle for field goals as well, I think uh, under 48.5 is, is definitely the way to, to look. Yeah, uh, and, and this will be one of those, uh, and you know, you can get the initial leans, obviously, you see from from Brad and Steven, mine in the opposite direction. So just be another one of those where 
uh, I'm right and they're wrong in in this game, and <laughs> we'll just move on. We, it's moved hasn't gone very well for for these guys to to oppose me so far in in all this. So I imagine I'll just go ahead and be cashing tickets while they're licking their wounds. Actually, um, <laughs> uh, 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 th- th- there there is uh, there is look. I, I think there's a couple of different things here, and, and then we'll move on to some of these other markets here. We'll get into huge full breakdown top to bottom from the game, but I actually think that the mismatch between the defensive line and the offensive line can work in uh, Cincinnati's favor in this one. Um, really? Yeah, because there's no, there's not going to be any, there's not going to be any justification for running on, on, on first down. He ran 60% of the time on first down in the game against the chiefs last week. Yeah, that was a joke. So there's not going to be any justification for doing that whatsoever. There's not going to be any, there's not gonna be any way that you can have any success doing that at all. San Francisco, one of the better power running teams in all the NFL couldn't get any sort of anything going. Uh, you had Eli Mitchell averaging under two yards a carry. Debo Samuel, who's been an absolute beast getting carries out of the backfield, couldn't get anything done whenever he was getting the ball as well. So for me, I, I actually think that they're going to look at the at the futility that they would have trying to do the things that Zach Taylor really wants to do and having to move away from that could actually play into their favor in this game. Um, so and again, we'll do a, a big, big top to bottom breakdown of this next week as well. And then we'll, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll Matt, go I'll, on and yeah, I'll save, I'll save the stats for next week, but I at least want to mention how, how historically significant the Bengals are as a Super Bowl team this week. So people understand this. I am now of the opinion that the Cincinnati Bengals are the luckiest conference champion in NFL history. This is the first team ever in the NFL to reach the Super Bowl, despite losing yards per play in three playoff games. The only other similar cases this century were four playoff teams. So four out of 21 years that had a first round by that lost yards per play in both the divisional and conference championships. The 2015 Broncos which was Peyton Manning's one arm swan song. It, it was incredible. They they won the conference championship in the Super Bowl with less than four yards per play in both of those games. And they did it with the best defense by DVOA and the 20th best defense of all time. The next example was the 2013 Seahawks. Again, number one defense in the league, 19th best all time by DVOA, Legion of Boom. In case you're wondering, the Bengals defense this year, 19th in DVOA. And the only other teams this century that won two playoff games despite losing yards per play to get to the Super Bowl were the 2009 Saints and the 2004 Patriots. So absolutely improbable, incredible run for the Bengals to get to play in this game if you're looking at it historically. We will, uh, again, we'll break this thing down uh, top to bottom here next week, but we do want to get into some of these markets that we don't want to let get away from you in case it is something that you're looking to, to get in on. And one of those ones that everybody is going to be looking at is Super Bowl MVP. And Stephen, it's one of those, it's one of those awards where, you know, you try to kind of figure out what a game narrative could be, what a game script yeah. could be, what is going to go on within the game and how it could play out to get to what you believe to be somewhere in the realm of the final score and and who wins and things like that. So that is how you would go about kind of betting a Super Bowl MVP as it is anyway. And then, of course, you can you can also kind of do an alternate game script and, and come up with an alternate way to look at it and see if there's any value outside of that as well. If we look at these MVP, if we look at these Super Bowl MVP odds right now, it is no surprise whenever you see that the quarterbacks are the short shots. And, and I mean, that that makes the most sense. Obviously, we're looking at uh, two two guys that have been, you know, in the limelight here. Matthew Stafford with this awesome narrative behind him that he wasn't able to get anything done. He gets finally traded to a good team. And here we go. Now he's getting it. Now he's getting it done. Of course, we know Joe Burrow being one of the absolute hottest names in all the NFL, everybody rooting for for him and this team, this Cinderella story that's kind of going on with them. What are you what are you kind of looking at here from an MVP standpoint? And and listen, I understand that the odds, we keep talking about this, the odds are very short on Stafford and Burrow, but this is historically a quarterback award. The first thing I wanted to look at was the history of it because this 
in a lot of ways is based on stats, but ultimately is about humans voting for it. So that you have to take that part of the handicap into consideration, just like you would an NFL award during the regular season. And of the 55 past Super Bowls, 31 of them have gone to the quarterback. That's a 56.4%. The equivalent odds of that percentage is minus 129. So I would actually make the argument that Matthew Stafford at plus money is good value in this game as the favorite. And obviously they need to win the game as the underdog, Mm -hmm. but by definition that would make Joe Burrow a good value here. So I do Mm -hmm. think the quarterbacks at the top of the board are probably the best values. Um, you, You heard the number overall for 55 Super Bowls, but this century it's even higher. 14 of the past 21 Super Bowl MVPs were quarterbacks, 67% of them. That's an equivalent of minus 200 if you were just to pick either quarterback to win. So I think there is value if you can predict the correct winner of this game. Yeah. If you go down and, the and, board, and, just, yeah. and, and to narrow it down even more, Steve, I mean, since 2010, Breeze quarterback, Rodgers quarterback, Manning quarterback, Flacco quarterback. Then we get Malcolm Smith at linebacker in 2014. Brady in 2015 quarterback, Von Miller, if you just remember the ama- ridiculous game Von Miller had in 2016 as uh, as MVP. Then you get Brady and Foles, quarterback, quarterback, 2017, 2018. Uh, Ed- Edelman in 19, and if you remember, that was the game. There was no points scored in that game. It was like it yeah. was the, one of the worst, one of the lowest scoring Super Bowls there was. It was impossible to give it to a quarterback, so it just went to the guy that had the majority of Tom Brady's yards in that game, and that was Julian Edelman. Uh, and then Mahomes, Brady, in in 2020 in 2021 so i mean it's just you know unless it's a game that we think is going to score no points like we did like we saw three years ago which we i don't think any of us think that it's going to be something anything like that then yes it is it is quarterback and it is value on on quarterbacks i think probably so long as you're getting any sort of plus money a a couple other notes too that seven the next the next most likely MVPs out of all the Super Bowls was seven for wide receivers and seven for running backs. But there's been zero running backs who have won Super Bowl MVP this century. The last was Terrell Davis in 1998. So I would actually argue that you're better off taking a long shot on defense to win MVP. We've had three linebackers slash outside linebacker yeah. pass rushers win MVP at long odds. The last being Von Miller uh, in that Denver Super Bowl. He was, I think, 50 to one. And then you go down the board and you're really just grasping at straws here, trying to find some crazy long shots that are real outliers. So to me in this game, um, you know, Matt, we're going to have different opinions. I'm sure you're looking at Joe Burrow or Jamar Chase. For me, I'm looking at Matthew Stafford or Cooper Cup from the. From the Rams perspective, I found it interesting looking at their past six games and the stat lines for Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup. And I think Cooper Cup would have been the MVP in three of those six games. The NFC Championship is close. We could argue whether or not you would have given Stafford that MVP at 337 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. They only scored 20 points, but Cooper Cup had 11 receptions, 142 yards and two touchdowns. I would have voted for Cooper Cup as MVP of that Mm. game. But we've seen quarterbacks win it when they probably shouldn't have before. And then week 16 and week 15, if you look at the Stafford and Cup stat lines, it's pretty clear to me that the Stafford stats were not good enough to win MVP and Cooper Cup balled out and he would have won it. So three of the past six L.A. Ram games, maybe it's worth rolling the dice here on Cooper Cup at six to one to win MVP this year, considering that we've seen the Rams offense stall out a little bit and rely heavily on him. Se- seven to one available at Caesars right now, actually on on Cup as well. Um, Brad, listen, we have stab- we've established that that quarterback is this is a, basically a quarterback award. But let's let's say the people listening and watching right now want to get something outside of the quarterback position in this game. Is there any name that kind of that you start to that starts to creep into your mind, saying like, you know, look, if the game goes this way, it could certainly end up being this guy. Uh, well, I'll bet three MVP bets so far. All right. um, no, no quarterbacks in there. No Cooper Cups. It's it's all Rams defensive linemen because I do not think they can be blocked. So Von Miller, he's around forty. You can get fifty to one, I believe, still in, in some books. Certainly in the UK. So I'm yeah. assuming in, in the US as well. Um, Donald, yeah, fifty. I think, fifty I think at BetMGM right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think Aaron Donald is is possibly the the best narrative uh, is, is around 15 16 to one around still last i checked um and like you you saw him on the sideline um 
in that in that San Francisco game, get, getting the defense going when they're down ten, you know, r- rallying everyone around him. And then you saw Stafford after the game going, you know, we we wanted to win this one for Donald. You know, we, he needs a Super Bowl. He's, he's been mm-hmm. the best best defender in the NFL for years now. We want to get him to the Super Bowl. And then also you have the fact you can't block him. So, and and, and the fact he is literally the best, you know, he's the face of the de- of defense in the NFL. So I feel like if he has a, a dominant game, there is, I think, enough narrative around him, around like his, his big moment that um, you, I could definitely see the voters giving it to him. And then the last one would be Leonard Floyd, 150 to one is is relatively widely available. I have seen a 200 to one at 365. Um, now, if if they just double team Von Miller and Aaron Donald as the big names, and is is Leonard Floyd one on one? I don't know which side they they might line him up. If they put him on the right tackle, he, he could go absolutely berserk. He could get three sacks. Um, and you know, I, I would I would assume a three sack defensive end is, is going to have a good shout of, of winning MVP and, and certainly better than 200 to one. Yeah, Leonard Floyd, you can find at 150. You can still find an 18 on Aaron Donald out there. So if you think that the game goes that direction, I certainly think that those are some smart bets to have in your account as well. On uh, On the running back side of things, guys, I mean, listen, one, they don't give it to running backs anyway, and two, Look, if the Bengals win this game, it's not because Joe Mixon went for 175 yards on the ground or 155 right. yards until like that. That's not happening. And look, as much as McVay loves Cam Akers, Sony Michelle's still going to siphon off six to eight carries in the game and and all of that. And he might even even get like the one yard punch in and stuff. So like I I don't like a ticket on on running backs on either side here at all because n- not enough usage from I think from the from Mixon in this one because it's just I think you're gonna have to throw if there's gonna have any success whatsoever and then from the Akers and Sony Michelle side you know they're they're siphoning off carries from each other and and I can't see that happening the only thing I will say about the receivers in cup and chase right is they're the only two guys that can go absolutely nuclear for these teams and they're they are also guys that in, at various points throughout the course of the season have had like 65 to 70 percent of the quarterback's yardage just themselves in a game so like Matthew Stafford could throw for only let's call it 245 in this game or 255 in this game and Cooper Cup having 140 of those or 150 of those and two touchdowns is not out of the realm of possibility right or Burrow throwing for 285 and Chase going for 165 170 of those and a couple of touchdowns because he broke a couple of long ones is not out of the realm of possibility here so I will say even though it doesn't go to wide receivers I think I do think that this game's a little bit unique from the standpoint that both of those guys can have such a high percentage of a smaller output of the quarterback to where it wouldn't be an obvious Burrow or Stafford situation for them to win it. Kind of kind of like you were laying out a little bit earlier, Stephen, where like they the numbers aren't just eye popping from a quarterback standpoint, but they have such a high percentage of that and of those numbers where they they actually could kind of stand out ahead of the quarterback. For sure. And I think it has to be it has to be a bit of a perfect storm because we have also seen kind of mediocre quarterback performances and they still give Mm -hmm. him the MVP. So that's happened in recent memory here. So I think it has to be pretty uh, to use the the instant replay term clear and obvious for a non quarterback to win this thing at times. So um, Aaron Donald winning would be truly historic. I mean, there have only been, I think two ca- yeah two cases of defensive linemen, true defensive linemen that have won Super mm-hmm. Bowl MVP, and they haven't happened in quite a long time. In fact, one of the times it was shared between the Cowboys, Harvey Martin and Randy White in 1978. They they literally shared Super Bowl MVP, and the other one was a defensive end. That was in 1986 with the amazing Chicago Bears defense and Richard Dent won MVP. Mm-hmm. So it would truly be historic if an interior defensive lineman won this award. 31 quarterbacks, seven player. wide receivers. He, he is. is, he really you know, is. I, I don't disagree with anything you said, yeah. though, Brad, that if, if this becomes a defensive dominating performance, obviously Aaron Donald has a huge narrative behind him for sure. 31 quarterbacks, seven wide receivers, seven running backs, uh, four linebackers, two defensive linemen, three defensive backs, and then one kick returner. 
one uh one kick returner has also can won. you can you name him you remember him it was i do not Brad, I remember. you remember oh i do not no oh was it, it desmond was, howard yeah heisman was, trophy winner yeah, desmond yeah, howard in yeah, 1997 yeah. with the packers super bowl yeah, 31 I, yeah, I remember now. I remember now. Des, Desmond Howard. So uh, anyhow, I, I do like those best numbers available on all of these guys that we talked about here. You can find plus 120 on Stafford, plus 230 on Burrow, uh, seven to one on Cup, 18 to one on Donald, 22 to one on Chase. None of us like the running backs, but 35 to one on Akers, 45 to one on Mixon. There is a 50 to one on Von Miller available if you want to go that direction. If you think it's one of these secondary receivers because they're double teaming, you know, Chase or, or whatever it might be. Higgins 50 to one um, uh, and then Jefferson is 100 to one out there if you want to go that direction from 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 them so anyway there there's there are some long shots out there but again typically a quarterback award guys before we get out of here I do want to go on some of these kind of fun props listen it's a Super Bowl I think you can have some fun here we like to talk intelligently about betting we like to say we like to bet to make money we like to bet to make a profit during the Super Bowl, I have no problem if somebody wants to throw some fun bets into their account. It's the last football game of the year. It's your last taste of the NFL. And a lot of these people just want to get some instant gratification. They just want to get some, ha ha, I had that ticket. That was fun. That was awesome, whatever. And so there are some like special bets that were up that I just wanted to run down here and see if you had to bet one or two of these, which one, of, which one or two do you think that you would bet um, any non quarterback to throw a touchdown pass 14 to one, any offensive lineman to score a touchdown. So fat man touchdown 22 to one, any player to have at least 150 rushing or receiving yards plus 175. any quarterback to have four or more passing touchdowns, four to one, any team to kick a game winning field goal. Uh, so basically a walk off to win the game five to one and any team to successfully recover an onside kick, 25 to one brad i'll go to you Let, let's say you had to bet one or two of these and just have some fun just have a fun ticket in your account w which one of these do you like i mean the the walk off the walk off is interesting because it feels like right 90 percent of these playoff games have ended on a walk off <laughs> and they've got old money mcpherson out there kicking the game winner every time mm -hmm. um I, I think for me maybe this this non-qb to throw a touchdown pass i mean we've seen odell throw a few passes right. for the rams um so you know i wonder if they they work up a philly special yeah, Odell, they have Odell throw, uh, you know, more than I think than we than we think. And and definitely the walk off. I'm glad you gravitated to that one, because for me, look, if if this game plays close, we know one thing. Both of these coaches are both of these coaches are nits, right? Both of these coaches are not guys that take chances. These are not guys that are going to extend, like try to get the, the first down or anything like that. Like they're going to kick the field goal for sure. And they're going to opt for the field goal. So uh, a five to one for a walk off to me is, is fairly interesting. Steven of these, which one kind of is, is something that you would like to just have in the account? Not necessarily as we say to make money, but it would be just a fun ticket to have as we, as we kind of wind down the foot football season. I believe you said any player to have 150, was it 150 rushing or receiving yards? Yes, I mean, that yes. one immediately jumps out to me. We got Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup playing in this uh -huh. game. I mean, they're absolutely legendary players this year. They've been amazing and they've put up monster performances against good defenses and have been borderline uncoverable for a lot of games this season. So getting close to two to one, there's pretty, pretty nice little action for me. I don't care that it's 25 to one. Don't do the onside kick recovery because no. you just don't, you just don't recover onside kicks in the NFL anymore. It like, it doesn't matter. That's just nothing that, that ever happens guys. As we get out of here, Brad, you talked about the three MVP bets that you have in your account. As we sit right now, we'll do a full game breakdown next week, but what are some other bets that you already have in your account? Um, as we sit here Friday before, you know, 10 days out from the Super Bowl. Um, I'll give you three quickly. I've got some Joe Mixon under 64 and a half rush yards. Mm. Um, I mean, you, you spoke about that they're probably not yeah. going to try and run the ball. Um, I think if they do try, which I don't think is out of the question because Taylor is a moron, I think they're going to slam their head into a brick wall made mm. of Aaron Donald and a Sean Robinson for, for three quarters. So I think that's, that's a good one. Um, I did second half higher scoring than the first half. Um, you see that that's hitting like 70% of Super Bowls just because they come out the gates 
so hot, obviously so much adrenaline mm-hmm. on the pass rushes and, and nerves on the offensive side. And then they have this 40 minute halftime show and uh, the pass rushes don't come out the same juice in the second half. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I did my biggest bet so far is Rams first half minus two and a half. You should be able to find that still. Um, because yeah, I, I think we get a bit of Sean McVay script um, and we get the, those pass rushes going berserk for uh, at least a half. Steven, what bets are in your account as we sit right now? I have bet Rams minus four. Um, saw that a lot of books are already moving to four and a half. So in case we're wrong and, mm-hmm. and it doesn't come back, then I wanted to make sure I, I locked in a four. The I haven't bet it yet, but I am going to sprinkle some lunch money on these edge rushers for the Rams to win Super Bowl MVP at like triple digit numbers here after mm-hmm. Hearing Brad talk about it as well, I think Leonard Floyd and Von Miller make some sense here if we get a game where the Rams offense only puts up like, you know, 17 points or 20 points like we I mean, the Rams offense has only scored 20 points in a handful of games here over the past six weeks. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, If I bet a more straightforward MVP, it will be either Matthew Stafford or Cooper Cup. I tend to gravitate towards some long shots here because mm. they're just a little more fun for me. And I've, you know, I've kind of made my money for the NFL season. So I'll, I'm most likely going to bet Cooper Cup here at seven to one to win MVP because I've been I've been shouting from the mountaintops that he should have gotten more regular season MVP consideration yeah. with how much he dominated. And um, other than that, just kind of keeping an eye out. They're not out yet, but the one market that I am really interested in and I'm going to be watching closely for when it opens are the individual player sack props for mm-hmm. all the reasons we talked about with the Rams. I think we might get some like it'll be juiced, but over half a sack for these key defensive players for the Rams. And I'm going to be wanting a piece of a lot of those players, most notably Floyd some, uh, Miller and Aaron Donald. Some prices are out on those top some two on Miller opened. and Donald. Yeah, they're, they're both about minus 200. The best well, I've, I've seen is minus 190, which is a, uh, I've not seen a Floyd number yet. Is this like your yet, so uh, not- wacky little, is, is this like your wacky British sports book that I don't have access to here in the great United States of America? <laughs> Bet 365, it, both Muller and Donald are minus 220 and 888. Oh man, I don't have that in Indiana. I got to find it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I, would you bet those numbers? I have not bet those numbers. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for hoping that someone else <laughs> opens up with a better number. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I feel you. Uh, so tr- full transparency for me, we talked about this heading into playoffs or whatever. I, I have Rams futures. I've had Rams NFC. I have Rams Super Bowl. So I'm going to win this thing regardless. Uh, that being said, I really do have a I really do have a pretty, pretty solid lean to uh, Cincinnati, keeping this thing close in this game. I took the four and a half. I'm going to try to scoop the whole thing. I'm going to try to win. I'm going I'm to be greedy and try to uh, try to win the whole damn thing here that they're able to keep it within four points. And I win the Rams uh, Super Bowl futures with all of that. Uh, I actually think that's how this game plays out. I also have bet the under 42 and a half for the longest touchdown in this game. I feel like both of these teams, I think we talked about, I think that the the smart thing for the Bengals to do is to play exactly like they did against the Chiefs in the second half, only rush three, drop eight back in coverage, and make the Rams have to dink and dunk down the field, make Matthew Stafford have to make a bunch of decisions over and over and over and over again. And the other thing that it works even more in your favor here is Matthew Stafford's not a runner. So you're not worried about dropping these guys and and then Matthew Stafford taking off for seven, eight yards at a time, you know, as you're kind of playing some soft coverage here. So I actually took the under on 42 and a half as far as the longest touchdown. I also took the under on the one and a half yards because again, there's value on that one every single year. As as often as pass interference is called in the NFL, as hard as it is to score in the red zone, you don't really realize how many touchdowns come from the one yard line. So I did take the under one and a half as well as far as uh as far as the shortest touchdown being scored. So uh, we'll have a whole slew of props that we bet guys for next week. We will have a full breakdown of this game, every scenario, every game script, every everything as to how that this game could play out and how you could go about betting this thing. It's going to be super fun. I'm almost already depressed that we are only one game left in the NFL season, but um, hopefully you made some money with us across the course of the year this year. And hopefully we make some more here on the Super Bowl. For Brad, for Steven, I'm Matt. See you guys next week.